bleeds, it reads. And if the apology isn't good, that leads to escalating tension on social media. Sometimes people are legitimately horrified by someone's conduct. Sometimes they see an opportunity to score human points or feel holier than that. All these social media issues lead to fear around apologizing. Let's be honest. Apologizing puts you in a subordinate position. It's what the British call being one down. It's not fun. For some, depending on your ego, it can be agony. And it's why so many people resist apologizing. It's scary to look under your own hood and see that you've done wrong. And scarier still to talk openly about the wrong we may have done to a person's community. The list of fears associated with apologizing seems endless and real. But remember, the flip side of fear, it's awe. And awe is worth it. Is this thing called awe that would make taking risks like apologizing so worthwhile? Professor Descartes Keltner, author of Awe, the new science of everyday wonder and how it can transform your life, says, Awe, as powerfully as any state you can pinpoint, shifts you being open and engaged and curious about the world. Professor Keltner adds, one of the things that I learned from studying all, all these years, it also other people, the more beauty and kindness and courage people around me should bring tears to my eyes when I see think about the students at UC Berkeley overcoming obstacles to get a degree. All by its very definition about vast system that we could be part of, a spiritual system, an ecosystem, a cultural system. All is wonder inspired by the sacred or the sublime. You can experience all by seeing a picture of Michelangelo's Doug David in an art book and then encounter face to face for the first time in the Uffizi Gallery in Florence. You can experience awe in the music of Col Nidre, which you just heard, or the many other familiar High Holy Day melodies, which Kenner Bronwyn, or could be your Kenner, <laughs> will lead you in during the next 25 hours. Studies have shown that awe impacts the uh, cytokine system, which can physically reduce inflammation in your body by cooling it down. This cooling down can also address the negative impacts of depression. Other scientific studies show that awe can impact the parasympathetic autonomic nervous system, which connects and engages you to others, creating a sense of community, like all of you gathered here in prayer this evening. Finally, other studies show that the impact of awe is long-lasting. An awe-inspiring experience can continue to bring physical benefits long after the initial experience, especially if this awe-inspiring experience is memorable. Recall can bring those positive effects back to your body. In their book, Sorry, 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 authors Ingle and McCarthy say, when you deliver a good apology, it can make you feel better about yourself and your own perceived past feelings. It can make you feel a sense of release and redemption, and it can fill you with a sense of mission and purpose. When you receive a good apology, it can make you feel connected to a person who took the step of reaching out to you and risking rejection. It can make you feel seen. In short, apologizing can bring you all the benefits of awe. So, how do we move from fear to awe through engagement. That leads us to ask, how do we engage in a good apology? I'm glad you asked. I would like to present the sorry, 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 six simple steps to great apologies. Step number one, say you're sorry. I mean it. Say, I apologize. I'm sorry. Don't forget the word I. Sorry doesn't count. Take responsibility. Two, for what you did. Say you're sorry for what you did. Be specific. Name it. It will be embarrassing, but you need to name it. And remember, it's for what you did, not how the other person felt about it. It will always be easier and less effective to say, I'm sorry you feel that way, instead of the better, I'm sorry I made you feel that way, I'll do better. Three, show you understand why it is bad. You understand the impact. You acknowledge the effects. If you said, 
oh, I've actually done this one. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. If I've actually done this one. <laughs> you clear the dishes and put them away, and then you get busy at work and didn't, and you should not say, I'm sorry, I was in a meeting. Jeez. Better would be, I'm so sorry I forgot to load the dishwasher. I know how frustrating that is for you because you expected to come home late after a long day of work and be able to prepare our dinner without a big mess in your way. Four, only explain if you need to. Do not make excuses. There's a continuum in apologies from explanations, sometimes good, to excuses, bad, to attacks. Very bad. If I was late for your baby shower because the bus I was caught fire, that's an explanation. If I was late for your baby shower because I was hung over, that is an excuse. If I was late for your baby shower because baby showers are a deadening instance of brainwashed consumerism and it took me a while to force myself to get out the door, well, that's an attack. Five, say it won't happen again. Sometimes the step is not needed. Sometimes it is obvious that it cannot happen again. But be very careful about repeat offenses. Maimonides, a.k.a. Rambam, writes, whoever merely verbalizes his confession without consciously deciding to give up his sins is like a person who immerses in a ritual bath, a mikvah, to cleanse himself but is holding a dead reptile in his hand. <laughs> his immersion will not cleanse him as long as the reptile remains in his hand. In other words, friends, let go of that reptile. Um, six, offer to make up for it. That was a very Rambam. In his laws of teshuva, making up for damage caused is essential. It's the reason why gossip is so dangerous and why sins of speech are far more prevalent in a repeated vidui confession during Yom Kippur. You cannot make it up to someone once the gossip is spread. I know I gave you six, but there's a 6.5. Listen. Depending on the situation, there may be this one last step. Let the person you've apologized to have their say. Listen. Don't interrupt. Just listen. Part of engagement is not just mastering how to compose a good apology, but also how to deliver it. A handwritten letter may be the most potent way to apologize. But we rarely write letters these days, which means if you opt for this modality, it's really serious. I mean, you actually found a stamp? Nice stationery? If you opt for email or text, be sure to conclude with, you do not have to respond to this. Then, there's the face-to-face -face apology. It's good because you can read body language, regroup, and rephrase if you know you're not saying it in an effective way. But here's the caveat. The person being apologized to needs to have the ability to walk away from you. For example, do not apologize to someone in a car when you're next to the person for a good long while. <laughs> and, and if someone walks away from you in the middle of the apology, let them go. Do not follow. Afterwards, consider giving the other person some time before you try again, maybe in a text or an email or a handwritten card, but not face-to-face. -face. These 6.5 steps have been included in your High Holiday Bulletin this evening so you can take them with you and practice. But here's one last piece of advice. Do not seek absolution from the other party. You are supposed to be the one apologizing here, not explaining or asking for the gift of forgiveness. Forgiveness is for the aggrieved party to either give or withhold, but it's not for us to ask for absolution. From God? Yes. From your fellow being? No. In conclusion, dear congregants, if I have offended any of you in this past year, you should not have been so sensitive. <laughs> but seriously, may we all engage in the delivery of truly meaningful and heartfelt apologies in the year ahead. Somkal, have an easy fast.
Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you for everyone who's online. Um, uh, we appreciate you being here. And uh, we'll see everyone at 6 o'clock tonight. Take care. Just like high holidays. <laughs> Good job, <to> <laughs>